he was called he was calling you honey bunny all that time and uh mm -hmm. you, you you decided to uh you decided to stay with it huh yeah it, it just sucked i was like okay and then that was my um little handle on my little cd and, and i was like oh, i like that it, it's sick it's nice it's cute it's, you know not too much not scary or nothing like that so i was like oh, i'll keep that all you have to do is stay a minute just take your time the clock is ticking so stay all you have to do yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Lockout men in the place to be for another week of working or driving or whatever you guys are doing. It's another work week, another Monday. We got four days left before it's the weekend again. And I know some of you guys that's on a two-week paycheck can't wait for it. You know what I'm saying? It's a good thing that I'm on a every week paycheck. So every week is a good week for me. <laughs> ah, what's going on, everybody? I am Lockout Men, and welcome back to the Lockout Men podcast show. I appreciate you guys being here. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. That's what we do. If you want to support the channel, you can always do that. The coffee app and the cash app is in the description below. Well, I am back with another podcast interview for you guys today. Uh, this young lady comes by way of Facebook. And I do believe she is a driver, right? You you are a driver, right? Yes, sir. You, 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 you are a female yes, driver, am. right? You drive, right? I am a female driver. Okay, yes, okay. Sir. We gonna get we gonna get into <laughs> we gonna get into all of that and more. I would like to bring on Honey Bunny to the show. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I enjoyed being here. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, with people with extraordinary names or extraordinary tags for their Facebook, Instagram, and all that other good stuff. Where did you come up with yours? Um, I was, uh, well, it was actually from somebody I was dating. And it kind of stuck over the years. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so he, he, was call, he was calling you Honey Bunny. All that time, and uh, mm -hmm. you 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 decided to uh, you decided to stay with it, huh? Yeah, it, it just sucked. I was like, okay, and then that was my um, little handle on my little CD, and, and I was like, oh, I like that. It's it's sick. It's nice. It's cute. It's, you know, not too much, not scary, or nothing like that. So I was like, oh, I'll keep that. Now you said. Yeah. Now you said this is from, uh, uh ex fling. What 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 happened with yeah. that? I mean, he gave you the he gave you the cute name and and you just you what what, what you do? Kick them to the curve because you know you said you you said you wanted the name. You're gonna keep the name. You did a you did a uh you did a what's love got to do with it? I'm keeping the name. But you, you kicked him. You kicked him to the curve, huh? No, 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 no. It was actually we were together for four years, and oh, okay. um, he actually got his nickname at the same time. You know, so I mean, if we were actually teamed, and he teamed up, we were together for four years. We drove and together and everything it's just our relationship just didn't work out because of his personal preferences as well all right all right let me let me let me stop for a second now you got me on your headset right so are you are you are yeah. you driving right now or are you are you are you waiting to get loaded right now what what's your status right now 
Um, I'm waiting for somebody to tell me to do something. Um, I'm going to switch and things. So I'm waiting for someone to let me know so I need to pull something out of oh, okay. the door. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Because I I was about to say if you was like sitting, if you was like sitting or anything like that, I was gonna probably have you to take your headset off. But we'll work with it. We'll work through. We're we we'll work we'll 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 <laughs> pressure. We'll we'll uh what is that? We'll we'll muster on, I guess. That's what's oh, up. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll muster on, that's what's up. So honey bunny, where where you come from? What what's where where you come from? Um, I stay in, um, North Carolina, uh, okay. Southport, North Carolina, I've been here a drag of my life. Yeah. Okay. Well, what was, what, what was life like growing up in North Carolina? As a matter of fact, I just, I just came from, uh, North Carolina about a week and a, uh, about a week ago. Oh, what part? Uh, now it's cra- Okay. Sh- Charlotte. <laughs> North- well, I'm near Charlotte. Okay, I am. okay because mm-hmm. I okay because I know I had a I had a delivery at Rock Hill, South Carolina. So coming mm-hmm. coming back from South Carolina into North Carolina, which is about a half an hour, I was in Charlotte. Am I right? Uh, or less. Yeah, depending on what part of Rock Hill. Oh, yeah, you're okay. right. Okay, okay, okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, hold on right quick. I just got word. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on. All right, guys. How about now? Can y'all can y'all hear me now? Give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me. If you guys can hear me, hit that thumbs up. I just uh I just plugged you guys in. So somebody Hit that thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear me good. All right. Um, all right. So again, back uh back at it. Uh North North Carolina girl. So you're a Carolina girl. So what was uh again, what yes, was sir. what was life like growing up uh in North Carolina? Well, I was kind of raised on a little farm, so it was productive, let's put it like that. Okay. I mean, we had to get up. Take care of the chickens and the dogs, and you know, escape the bulls that then jump the fit from from um. There was a uh, what was it called? A um, was a ranch next door. What was it? Uh, um, uh, I can't even think of it. A rodeo next door, mm-hmm. and so it was. It was always you always on your toes. You know, you was always on your toes. Sometimes you come home bulls and be everywhere. You know, and you just gotta. Put your head down and have to run inside. So, I mean, I had a wonderful childhood. I mean, well, you know, of course, you know, there's stuff going on. But, I mean, it was it was nice, you know, playing outside and, and animals, cats, dogs, horse, you know, horses. And so, that's basically how my, my childhood went. Okay. Okay. So growing up, uh, growing up before you got into trucking, what what would you was doing before you got into trucking? Oh, um, I was a uh, hairstylist. Oh, okay. Okay. So was you was you a rock out hairstylist, or you was just uh, you know, just just a clean? Oh, I up? special I specialized in weeds. Like weeds were my thing. Back in the day, everybody was getting the micros, the sew ins. You know the kinky twists and stuff like that. So, I mean, I just just did that. I I did that, made my money. Everybody wanted the hair done, so everybody, if you act just like I get your hair, I can grab it and get you right. Honey so bunny, I did that for her. honey, yeah. honey, mm-hmm. honey bunny. I I'm a man. I I I like mm-hmm. a, I, I I like a fine woman. You know what I'm saying? Hair done, mm-hmm. makeup done, and all like that. But I I tend to cater or gravitate more to the to the natural woman. Okay, you know, without okay. without the weave and everything. 
My my thing is this because you went the, the women they spend a lot of money for their hair. Okay. Yeah. So talk to me, honey bunny, like I'm a person that don't understand. Why? Why not just There's a lot of reasons. Especially with black women, the reason why we wear weave isn't necessarily for you guys. Oh, and it's okay. not because okay. oh the you know, the you know, the Caucasian or the what the way the world is, you gotta have great and beautiful hair. Right. No. A lot of women are natural under that weave and mm-hmm. they wanna protect their hair. Especially like a lot of women in the trucking industry. You don't have a lot of time to do your hair and you're going to different climates. Natural hair is not really built to switching up different climates and different climates. Okay. So you got to keep the moisture in it. And if it's too, you know, if it's going to dry and it's just somewhere where it's too much moisture, then you got your hair, you know, puffing out. You can't take care of it and maintain it. So a lot of people, a lot of women feel like, you know what, instead of me sitting here, spending three or four hours or more or less in my door my hair so I take care of my natural hair every day it could possibly risk the the integrity of my hair and you know going through the day to day I'm just going to get the weave and get it you know a weave or a wig or something like that that way I won't have to it won't you know the, the everything else won't damage it and of course it looks nice so why not help you get your hair growing underneath and you can maintain it and keep your scalp moisturized and everything. Why? Wow, you're still looking good. So, unless you just want to walk around look like buckwheat, you know, and nobody wants to do that. Everyone wants to look cute. Now, what's with the, what's with the, what's with the multicolors? What's, just give me a little bit of background on that. What's, what's with the, what's with the multicolor? Right. Uh, the, the multicolor weaves. I, I I see females with red, orange, yellow, blue, purple, pink. What, 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 what's with the? Well, I've done every color in my hair before, okay. so I can't. Okay. I'm, I'm, a lot of women now are trying to every. I mean, I think it's more about everybody wants to be different. Everybody wants to do things that they haven't done in their hair before. Um, and in this day and age, you know, being extravagant and, you know, being different is something that everybody wants to do. Just look at Facebook. It tells you, you know, you know, everything is about being different, being your own person. So hair is just an expression of yourself. If you want to try something new, if you want to look a different way. And, you know, a lot of people, they couldn't do that when they were young. Okay. Or they tried it and they damaged their hair, but now they know more about how their hair is and, you know, and they got more information out there with YouTube and different um, genres like that in order to help you take care of your hair if it is colored. You know, so, I mean, I say rock the color. I'm not personally going to do it because I don't want my hair to be, you know, broken off. Sooner or later, your hair will break off because you have to either keep getting it cut and trimmed and, of course, getting any kind of dye on your hair is going to change the integrity of your hair. But, um, oh, hold on, one moment, one moment. Okay, okay. Hello? Yep, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I, I do apologize. I got to work. <laughs> I got to be No, no, but, no, um, no, you're good. You're yeah. Good. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I just think that a lot of women are just wanting to express themselves a lot more. Because before, like, Everybody was just getting bleached and getting that yellow, orange color and thinking that blonde and trying that out. And, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, if you're wearing all these colors, you're a clown or you're a loose woman and you want attention and all this other stuff. Nah, not like that anymore. All so, right. So how, everybody's how, rocking. How, how long, well, or do you, well, being the truck driver, uh, do you still do hair when when you get a chance to or you just you just cut it it out oh, yeah. to to do truck driving full time no no when i come home i still do hair but not like cut and colors and stuff like that i do weed right. i let all that go when i started driving yeah i have like a certain amount of mainly it's older women that i've been doing for years mm-hmm. and they're like oh i want a weed can you break me up or can you slow me down really quickly or something like that. I'm like, yeah, sure. 
Now, in the beginning, uh, I used to do business cards uh, for for a lot of barber shops, a lot of salons, and stuff like that. In the in the beginning, was it hard for you to generate um, clientele? No. No. Because I was in a salon when I was 13 as an apprentice. And I was there, yeah, I was there when I was 13, just sleeping up and doing friends of mine here. Mm -hmm. And when I moved in with my mother, we were in the hood. So Mm -hmm. everybody wanted me to do their hair. I was doing hair in school. You know, I was. I was braiding everybody's hair and stuff like that. So when um, Alicia gave me the opportunity and to just do the weave there and go forth and go, I had all the people in the hood. I had her clientele. I mean, I had I I, I was always making money. Uh-huh. Either it was at school, the shop, or leaving the shop. I had my own clientele. Now, the, now, from what I have, what I have garnered throughout the years of, of dealing with uh, barbers and 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 salonists or beauticians, the way that the, the the best person to 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 rock the hairstyle is the one that get paid the best. The, are y'all? I noticed. I, I noticed coming up that it is. It is real well where from where I'm from, which is from Cleveland, Ohio, it's like a damn near a salon on every freaking corner, a barber shop on every freaking corner. You know what I'm saying? So down there in North Carolina when when you was doing hair, was it was it competitive down there? Like did you actually have people try to steal your clientele? Did people come to you like, oh well, Shaniqua down the street could do it ten dollars less? Did did you have that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I I, I didn't really have that issue. I had <laughs> the issue I had was those clients wanting me to take them from instead of being inside the shop, outside the shop. Mm-hmm. Because my outside the shop prices were different than my inside the shop prices. Oh, okay, okay, because okay. Because you got to pay I would extra. Help, I would help the community. No, yeah, yeah, you have to pay extra inside the shop. Okay. Yeah. So they were trying to get, always trying to get me. Hey, Ashley, you know, can you hook me up out? out you know, you get out the shop and this stuff the third. No, you are a shop client. <laughs> right, because you, you know, met, you met, them, I can't you met do that. them in the shop, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. okay. Plus, you also got to yeah. pay. You also so got to you got to pay for that that rental spot too. What, what was that the yeah. what, was, what was the average? What was the average goal for for a uh, booth rental for for a salon? Well, when I was there, it was only like a hundred, hundred and twenty five a week. So about four seventy, about four seventy five a month. Wait, twenty five. One, two, three. So about five. Yeah, one, two, three. about five hundred. Yeah, yeah, about five hundred a month. But you, you, yeah, you, you paid her every. You, you paid out every week though, right? Yes, I paid. I paid weekly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. I got this question now. You know, I I I got a barber that I rock with on a on a daily. He's he's like like the man. Like literally, if you're not there at like eight o'clock in the morning when he open up, now that you got to make an appointment with him, man. Um, I mean, he he have like maybe about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten heads outside on a Saturday waiting on him just to get in. Um. When you got multiple, when you got like multiple people that's in the salon, um, how do y'all like? How do y'all manage uh, a walk in? So say like, say like it's you, another person, and another person uh, that's there. How how do y'all navigate a walk in? Like, 
if somebody walked through the door, it's like depends one... on what they came in for. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you guys don't fight for the walk-ins, pretty much. No, no. Okay, okay, okay. Have you? Yeah, you never really fight for that. So I mean, trucking is like a far cry from from a hairstylist. How did you? How did you? How did you come across being interested in driving a truck? Well, um, I dated a truck driver. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that that's how that happened. I was dating him, and then, um. Excuse me. Mm, you had to clear that throat. I I hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I was dating him. That was the guy who gave me my nickname. <laughs> yeah, that was the guy who gave me the nickname. <laughs> okay. And um, we uh, at the time, you know, uh, when Bush was in office and all the textile mills in our area closed down. Mm -hmm. Um, my money started getting funny. Okay. And YouTube started really popping off. So a lot of people were doing their own hair or learning how to do hair. So now they're getting little Phoenicia down the road to do her, do their hair mm -hmm. instead of coming to me, you know? Okay, okay. And um, so my money started getting really funny. And to the point where I was like, man, I'm going to have to, like, get a job. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so, um, I, uh, was with, uh, this individual and he was driving trucks and he was like, Hey, come out on the road with me for, you know, for a little while and just, just chill. And I'm like, man, I can't afford to do it. I got these things called bills and I just can't be out on the road with you. And I got these bills. And he was like, well, don't worry about it. I got you. I'm like, huh? okay, she okay. did. Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, her. Huh, I ain't gonna pass that down at all. Okay. And I liked him since high school, so that was even better. Okay. So, um, excuse me. <laughs> so, we, uh, I got on the truck with them, and I think I wrote for with them for like four, five months or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know. Oh, you kind of breaking up there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I walked away from my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, All right, our so relationship grew and... Yeah, our relationship grew and... It was like, okay, let's just get the studio and... Um, we can just ride across the country. Did you... want Once you... want. Once you got your CDL, and I'll I'll back up a little bit as far as how you got your CDLs. But when you got your CDLs, did you did y'all two did y'all two team? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. We teamed for like nine. Months. Well, when he was losing his job in the company. All right. So let me ask you now, now. Now, now, let me back up because I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll jump forward again. But let me back up. So when you decided to get your, when you decided to get your CDLs, um, where did you go to get your CDLs? I actually went through Swift. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was, what was your, yes. what was your experience with them? With the company, um, different in the school, let me put it like that. Okay. The Swiss Academy, I believe, is the best school ever. Hold on. It's the what now? I'm not. <laughs> it's the best training school ever. Okay. A lot, um, in a my lot opinion. Of, a lot of, uh, well, yeah, your opinion is good because a lot of people say that the Swift Academy is, uh, is a good training school to get your CDLs. But... When you, yes. jump, when you jump on to the company side, how was your experience then? <laughs> I did not care for the company. 
Okay. So 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 you went out for <laughs> so, you, so you went out for your you went out with a trainer. Uh was your Oh yes, that was what, horrible too. All right, do tell if if you want. Now mind you, this is like eight eight years or eight or eight and a half years ago. Okay. So okay. I had two trainers. The first trainer I had was a um a uh, older white lady. Okay. And um, apparently she just had some uh, plastic surgery done on her stomach and she wasn't that clean. Showers were not um a part of her repertoire. Okay. So that kind of threw me. Mm-hmm. And um, we wound up getting into it when uh, she called me a racial slur and I about went to jail. Okay. You're not. Okay. So you're, you, 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 it's about the second interviewee that I had that somebody had an issue with the opposite race being on the truck that's calling somebody out of their name racially. I don't get that, do they? I mean, because do you get people, tight. You get these? tight. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You get tight with the person that you're in there because you're, you're smelling each other, you're eating, you're, you're in front of each other, ASS. Right. You know? So, that's all fine and well, you know? And everybody has that, that racial talk. You know, like, hey, look, I'm cool. If you want to sing a song, you got to work. And it, go ahead. I don't care. You ain't talking it, and you're not putting it toward me. You know? I don't care. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. Just do not aim those derogatory um, things toward me. Now, did... I'm um, empty. Empty going to the pre. Did you... Did... Well, I guess... I, I guess Swift didn't know... When they was, huh? I guess, okay. What trailer is it? I don't know. I know it's one of the three. That okay. I'm sorry. So Swift didn't did did Swift know of this type of trainer that they that they that they put you with that had that type of feelings <laughs> towards. Uh, people of the uh of the opposite race. I mean, they kind of we should have probably known. I mean, you know, Harley Davidson doubt. You know, I, I, I'm not trying to say you know bad things about Harley Davidson. You know, but come on. I mean, you know, you, you don't want to racially profile people, and you would hope. I mean, that she was actually. You know, I'm not going to say that she wasn't a great trainer. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that, you know, her, um, demeanor, personal preferences were just different than mine, you know? Did you, now you say you had two trainers, so obviously you didn't finish out with her. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, did you finish out with the second one and what was this, and who was the second one? Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, I got a, a black guy. Oh, okay. So you yeah. got a male trainer. And yeah, and I only fit, I was with him for like a week. I only had like a week left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was cool. Yeah, oh, we okay. had no problem. Okay, he, he that and everything. He didn't oh. come. He he didn't come after you. He didn't come after you with no bullshit. He he actually trained you like you was, that you needed to be trained, right? Oh, I was already basically done. Yeah, I was done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. All the right. last week is like, yeah, the last week of that four week process is like, you're basically steering wheel driving, you know? Okay. Okay. That's what's up. All right. So, uh, yeah, well, holders, basically, so yeah, how, like how long you was actually with Swift? Was your, was, was the guy that I was, was with them? I was with Swift for exactly one year and three days. Okay, so do you? Well, let me ask you this: When you went through the Swift Academy, did you go there through? Did you go there on Swift's dime, or did you go there through? Yes. Oh, okay, so you obligated the the uh, the contract for that year of driving. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
uh, the the guy that you was dating at the time that you know when you jumped into the truck. I want to jump on how how did that how did that relationship form? Uh, did you did you guys find the did you guys now you wasn't in the industry he was in the industry how did you guys come together and how did that relationship why he was on the truck and you was still you know in North Carolina how did y'all make that work um you have to rephrase that like okay so I, where when did you, where, he where, lost where, the job, where, how did, no, where did you guys meet? Like, how did you guys meet? We met in high school. Oh, okay. okay. So you guys already, so he, you guys already knew each other prior to him or before yes. him getting into the industry. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, was y'all dating at the time in high school or no? No. Oh, no, okay. we were just friends. Okay, so when did the dating start it? When he was a truck driver? Yes. Okay, now, how did how did that, now at the time of he's driving trucks, he's away for weeks at a time and all like that. How did, how did it work for you guys? How did y'all make it, how did y'all make it work? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we just did, I guess. It's not hard. It's, it's not, I mean, I feel like if you love somebody you care about, it's not hard to keep your panties on or your, and your pants up. You know, like, I don't okay. just keep it to yourself. I mean, men is, is different, you know, of course. Because right. I have a, you know, a drive to procreate. But, I mean... I didn't have an issue. Now, he did. I did. You know. Uh, okay. 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 So you guys was like, you know, keeping the contact uh, via phone, Facebook, oh, yeah. and all Talking that. Talking on the phone. Stuff. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, because you know, like it's kind of, it's you know, as far as being a trucker, it's car, it's kind of. Well, I don't think it's hard for many people. Maybe some and all like that. That is. You know that it's kind of hard to have a to hold a relationship down while being the trucker. You know, I think it's hard dating as a trucker. Mm -hmm. Like I could date another trucker for the simple fact I already know the full stuff that's going on with them, okay. and I already know like depending on like if he's an independent contractor or a company driver, mm -hmm. like you can't get away. You can't do as much stuff as a lot of people think. Right. Now I'm not saying you can't do some stuff. I'm just saying you can't do as much. Like you ain't going to be out here just. You know, playing duck and donut with the world out here. You know, so like, and especially now, you know. But as a, you know, but it's I don't know. I mean, I just believe like dating now is like all oh, is as a female, it's truck driver. It's it's very harsh. Like I, I mean, you know, just a regular person that's not a truck driver mm -hmm. creates its own issues because it's like. I'll date somebody and they're, oh, man, you make all this money. Like, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. I don't make all this money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I make enough to pay my bills. Mm. Just like you make enough to pay your bills. Mm. You know? Don't be looking at me. Preach. Oh, well, you, you, you be going out balling out. You know how long it took me to have this balling out money? Preach. It took me two months to save the foot and back in order to have this balling out money. Mm. You know? Because I want to ball out today. God you damn know? it. So it's, it's, you know, you got people that's looking into your pocket and what you you. what's going on with your life. Exactly. Oh, you, uh, you shouldn't be doing all this stuff for your family. But what I'm doing for my family, I bet if you, if your family needed you, you'd be helping them, but you ain't making as much as I am, so you can't afford to do that. You know, so I don't know, man. Like, it's just, uh, you got, you got men with their hand out too, you know? Exactly. Oh, uh, since you're making all this money, you can, uh, you can pay for this date. Mm. Uh, no, I can't. You know what I'm saying? What you can do is come out of your pocket and pay for it. Mm. Yeah, this, this is a what is a what they call it, two for twenty. You tell me you ain't got twenty dollars. Mm. Yeah, now, let me ask oh, you. you ain't got it. Oh, okay. Ooh, let me let me ask you this right quick. Let me ask you this right quick. Let me let me do a let me do a uh, what's your name clap. Hold on, right quick. All right, that's the midway point. <laughs> 
All right, let me let me ask you this right quick oh, now. What? Let me ask you this. I got, oh my god, I I I got um, I got a question. I got a question because that's nah. how that's how we feel. Us uh, us male drivers feel about females like that's not in the industry. They looking they looking at our pockets like, yo, like you making all this money. And all like that, but they don't know. Like now, if you're not in the industry, then you don't know what we go through to make this money, that, this little bit of money that, that that we that we're trying to get. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that because a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of people don't realize that uh, depending on where you at if you a beginner if you're intermediate or if you're a, uh or if you're an expert which, which where the, where the money lies at money ain't all that great out here you know so stop looking in my pockets i'm just saying. Right. Right. i don't care if i am making blase blase it's not yours <laughs> you know what i'm saying but I can I can say this. I can say mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Men, y'all are totally different than us females. Okay? Because the reason why women are looking in your pocket, looking at stability, can you take care of me? Will you if we have a child, will you be able to take care of my child? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that looking at your money is a whole lot different than a man looking at mine. Are you feeling what I'm coming from? Now, I'm not saying there ain't no gold diggers out there that's like, oh, yeah, let me get that. Let me get everything that you can get. But a lot of women, regular women, they they feel, okay, you are in a financial situation where if anything pops up, you can help. You know, if we were to stay together, I know that the financial burden won't be always on me. You know, because a lot of men out here, there's, some shite, there's a lot of shite men out here that, won't even help with the bill. And there's a lot of women taking care of grown A men. And a lot of women done been through that. So, like I say, in y'all situation, it's a lot different. For a man to look at me for my money, it's something totally different than what y'all was. A man looking at my money, I feel something wrong with you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You looking for a come up. I ain't about to make a come up. I can give you the instructions on, on how to obtain your CDL for free. And you can come out here and do the same thing I'm doing, you know. If anybody needs to know that, that's the WIOA Act. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can go to any unemployment office and apply for that uh, grant and get your CDL for free. But if you need some information, I can help you. If you need me to be there for you, I can. If you follow hard, um, I can help you. But don't be looking at my money like, oh, well, uh, this is an extra income for myself. No, it is not. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is not an extra income for yourself. I am not paying your bills that I don't live with. I have no obligation towards you. I'm not parking out your kid and you take, I'm, you know, you take care of it so type I, of situation. I, I you got, know, I got a, I got a quick relationship question for you, then. Uh, yes. When you, when, when a male and female goes out to dinner, or they go out on a date, or they go out to dinner. Um, and you eat, y'all eat, y'all, y'all finish eating and the bill comes. Mm -hmm. Do who should, who should foot the bill? Okay. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of Mm -hmm. different scenarios. Mm -hmm. For one, Mm -hmm. for, for one, If you ask me out, then you should have already known what, and you take me where you can afford, then you, you got that. That's on you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If you like ask one, I like to go out, you know, I like to take you out. That means you are offering to, um, to pepper me for the day. You know, okay. you're offering that service for me. I greatly appreciate that. Okay. You know, okay. if you cannot afford, a lavish evening of uh, hunger or whatever you might think. I don't care. 
pick a place where you can't afford. If you cannot afford to take somebody to root for do not take them to root for You know what I'm saying? If you can only afford Applebee's or McDonald's, you let that person know. Look, you know, I might not, I, not right now, financially can take you to this place, but would you like to go for a coffee or whatever, or whatever? Stay in your financial way. Okay. So that's how I feel about that. Now, if we talked about it and say that we want to go somewhere and it's going to be a little bit more expensive, then we should talk about that before. Like, look, you know, I, I, if, if you say I can only afford this, and I'm like, no, I don't want to go there. You know, I want to go somewhere that's a little bit a step above or two steps above where you proclaim. Then that's me telling you that I'm willing to pay for something for myself. Because you can't afford to pay for it. All right. So, and so now it's either on you to be like, hey, look, because um, <laughs> I want to, I want to, excuse me, I got to, I've been out of a sickle in my throat all day. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to, um, I want to treat you. So give me another week or two or whatever to save up. That's fine. Or we can put $50, $50 to then, you know, or create a budget. It, it just all depends on, the situation and the talk that you have prior to it. Okay. But if he's offering to take you somewhere, then you should stay in your lane about where we're going. Because mm. I ain't paying for shit. Okay, okay. So what if what if what, I if, what if I'll leave it? I'll leave. What if what if a truck, <laughs> what if a truck driver guy? What if a truck driver guy calls you up and say, "Hey, hey, say hey, uh, honey, bunny, um, you know, let's uh, let's let's do." Uh, Let's do dinner or something like that. Then y'all go to dinner. Mm-hmm. The check comes, mm-hmm. and he says, mm-hmm. and he says, "Let's go Dutch." What will be your comeback to that? Fine, sure. I pay my way. I pay his, and we'll never speak to each other again. Ooh, damn it! Man. I'm not going to buy or do Ooh. something I can't take. I can't take care of myself. If you can't take care of me, you're not willing to take care of me, then that shows me that's what that's what you're about. You ask you ask me you ask me to take time out of my schedule. Mm-hmm. Time is something that you never get back. That's why people don't understand. Time is something you never get back. Okay. I can get back money. I can get back a whole lot of things. I can't get back my time. So if you want to sit here and waste my time to try to put yourself as a student and then you want to say, Oh no, we're not a student, we're friends. So if we're Duchess, we are friends then I'm going to treat you like what? You are no longer a prospect for getting anywhere near these jobs or mm. any step further. So okay. I'll holler. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> that's how okay. I feel about it. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. All right. Well, we, you know, uh, okay. we, whoa. Hmm. So let me uh, okay. So so let's continue on, man. How long you been? Uh, well, you said well, you, you already you already said it that it was eight years ago. But so you have been driving for eight years. Oh yes, sir. What was some of the significant changes? Yes, sir. What was some of the significant changes you noticed in the industry? Money. <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you, you said money. You, you said money right off the Well, you want me, want me to line just around? My money is different. I mm. my money different. I'm not going to say that it's, it's worse. No, I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying? Because with the experience level that I got, I'm getting paid. You mm. know? But it is different when. Bi- Big comp- it's different from big companies. And big companies are offering me stuff that I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not working there. Right, you're not going. Uh, I've noticed the independent kind. Con- yeah, because they, you know, eight years experience, clean NVR, all that stuff. Oh, we're gonna offer you forty five cents a mile. You can go right. fuck yourself for forty five cents a mile because I'm not about that life. You know, and I've noticed that the independent are the ones that are paying the 55 and the 60 and the 65 cent a mile. And I mean, there are some big companies out there that's offering that 65, but I'd be damn if I'm going across the world in order to make that money. You feel me? I'm not about that life either. 
But some um, of them, some of them companies, I don't know. Uh, some of the companies that's offering like 55, 50, 50, 55, 60 cent a mile is not giving the miles though. How do you feel about that? That's the way they do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't knock nobody for not wanting to pay. I mean, honestly, I mean, cause think about it. If you had your own business, would you really want to pay somebody a lot of money? Not really, but. Exactly. exactly. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, man, this is unfair. No, they got to put a cap on you. See, that's why a lot of people don't understand when you go in for an interview or you put in that, or that application, the question isn't how much I get per mile. What is my annual growth? What are you, what are you, what are you trying to pay me annually? Oh, that's a good, you know, that's a because good I'll question. tell you, that's a good question. I'm about yeah, to, you can't I'm be like, about, I'm about to, yeah, I'm exactly. About to write that down. That's a good question right there. Oh, yes, sir. Because that's how you know how much you're going to make, and you divide that by the weeks of the year, which is two, three, how you want to do it, you know, and then that's how you know how much money you're going to get every week. And that's how jobs, are so, you know, know how much they're going to pay you. That's okay. how they do their budgeting. They're not going to be, you know, they're, you know, you get up there, you're like, oh, man, I had a wonderful week. I made $1,800 this week. That thing. Then next week you pull in so $500. But like, yeah, why do they do this to me? Because they're managing your money. They're managing how, many ta- how much taxes they're going to spend on you at the end of this quarter. So it's not that they ain't giving you the miles. They just ain't trying to, they only trying to pay you what they trying to pay you. They ain't going to get no more, no less what they say they're going to give you. Mm. That's a that's a good question right there. That is a good question right there to ask them. Instead of instead of cent per mile, ask them how much they're gonna how how they gonna <laughs> how much they're gonna give you annually. But they but when exactly. but, but when they turn around but when they turn around and say that because you know you ask you know you ask all these recruiters out there they're gonna tell you well you can annually gross about fifty about fifty grand forty grand thirty grand a hundred grand. Yeah, but that ain't shit. Not, that's when you but, go somewhere else. But that's not, but that's not the case. I'm thinking what you want. I'm thinking what you want to say is, how much am I gonna get annually? I don't want the average. I want to know when how they, much when I they, when get. they, when they give you, yeah. But when they give you your annual, when they quote your annual, well, they they give you a variable between the high and the low, right? Depending on your experience is where you fall in between that. And that's what your sit for a mile and stuff like that. So when they tell you your sit for a mile, let's say they say, oh, um, the top pay is uh, 55 cent a mile. We're going to start you at 55 cent a mile. Awesome. Wonderful. Right? Hold on for a second. They want me So when to... they say. Hold on. Hold on for a second. Huh? They'll give you variables on how much they're. they're um, when they tell you, oh, between fifty-five and seventy thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. if they quote you the highest, the highest bit per mile, then you know you're looking at that. That you're looking close to that seventy. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, exactly. exactly. But of course, it's also about how much you work and how long you're willing to stay out there, or you know how much time you take off and. If you can take off and you know family stuff, all that other good stuff, blah 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 blah, vacation. That's so, what's up, honey bunny. Yeah. Uh, first, I, I, I definitely, mm-hmm. uh, I definitely appreciate you coming on, chopping it up with me. So throughout the eight, mm-hmm. th- throughout the eight years, hold on, let me do the clap. Hold on. I usually do this for my, <laughs> so I, I do this for my sink when I go back and edit, so I can make sure that everything. Is synced up, but um, but uh, mm-hmm. with, within the eight years, how many companies you 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 been through uh in the eight years? Oh man, I don't even know because I was jumping after a year. Man. Mm-hmm. I don't know about eight, maybe eight, nine. So how? So the company that you, the company that you're at now, but you're, some of I had my own company. I've had my own company before too. I count that. Oh, okay, okay. So the company are you at yeah. now? So you're you're only oh this you're on an operator now or you're a lease driver? What, what's no. your status now? 
No, I'm I'm actually a contractor right now, but no, I'm not. Nope. No, I had to let my truck go Aww. when the COVID hit. I couldn't make my truck payment. And I had another driver. He was making all the money. I wasn't making nothing. Mm. So... I was I don't that, let him do. that would have been that's that's my segue question. So of course, COVID season hit this year, messed up a lot of people. How how did it affect you? It caused me to jump from company to company. Um, I I had my truck and I I had had another driver on my truck. You know, team make more money or whatever, mm-hmm. but there wasn't any team freight. Like all the big companies were just sucking up the team freight, so I wasn't able to get um, the loads that I needed um, in order to sustain myself. Because after paying him and after fuel, the fuel wasn't even that bad. It started going down. It was just getting these loads off, and my, my truck payment wasn't even that much. It was just that after everything, insurance, all that stuff. And paying my driver, because I paid my driver very well. I was only bringing home like three to, to three to six hundred dollars a week. Oh, ugly. So very ugly. And then places closing down, so I couldn't even get the load off, even though they were, oh yeah, you deliver there tomorrow, and then you get there, and they're like, oh, no one's here to even take it. And you're just sitting there like. Okay, you know, like, all right, wow. and you got to sit there for two or three days. So it really messed my money up, and I just didn't see the point in keeping my truck anymore. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, then I'm I went sorry to another that, company. <laughs> I'm sorry that hit you. The yeah, that, that hit yeah. You hard right there. Oh, that hurt, hurt bad. Because I had already invested like $42,000 into my truck. So I cried about that day. I cried. Like, I bought, I bought like a little baby. Because <laughs> I was like, no, I spent 42000 God, you know? But uh, <laughs> then I went to like a small company that had about five trucks. And I was with them for like two weeks. And their truck went down and they couldn't afford to fix it. Man. Honey Bunny, I am going to have to, I'm definitely going to have to uh, bring you back for a follow-up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to bring you back for mm-hmm. a follow-up. Thank you. But, uh, but man, this, this, is, this, has been, uh, this has been an awesome conversation. I really do appreciate uh, you coming on and chopping it up with me and all like that. I, I am sorry for, you know, your, your situation as far as, you know, how COVID affected you and all like that. And, you know, it's unfortunately that it not only affected you, but it affected a lot of drivers and forced them to revert back to, you know, revert back to company driving. And I know it kind of hurts sometimes, you know, you, you making, you making X amount of dollars and now you only making this amount of dollars and all like that. Honey Bunny, what what oh, what, yeah. what tips do you have? What tips do you have for for women that's uh, that's interested in coming into the trucking game? Um, don't go under any contract with anybody. Focus. Um, don't rely on any kind of man to help you. I don't mean that in like a derogatory fashion. I just know there's a lot of women out there that's scared to be out here on their own and they feel like, oh, I, if I can team up with a man, I'll be safer. Or some women would prefer to try to snap, you know, just, just do it yourself. You know, try to stay as safe as you can. If you can drive night as a female, drive night because it's safe for you at the end of your shift to be parked during the day where you can shower, eat, and and everybody can see you. It's daytime. You can see everything. You know, keep a knife on your person and a, a, under your pillow because a lot of companies don't let you have a gun. So knives are your best friend just in case you got to cut somebody or just so that you can use it for your everyday work. There you go. You know? There you go. I agree with and, you. And, um, you know, just 
just stick in there. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they want us women out here because they know that we're safe drivers and of course they need that female quota. So they're going to, they're going to cater to you. They're going to make sure that you're right, that you have the best equipment on the fleet. So don't worry and, you know, don't be afraid to open your mouth. Because a lot of what they said, you know, we, we let a lot of stuff go. I know I did in the beginning. I let a lot of stuff go because I didn't want anybody to think of me as an angry black woman. But fuck that. Open your mouth. If you see something that's dangerous, say something. You know, but being an angry black woman or, be, or being an angry woman or whatever, whatever. You know, just open your mouth. Say what, what's needed if somebody talking to you you know, um, in a derogatory way or fashion, just make sure that you always CYA cover your ass, you know? And I think the main thing that I could tell anybody is CYA cover your ass. If a dispatcher calls you, hang the fuck up. (laughs) Put that shit on a wall, send it to a text message. I don't want to hear nothing. I don't, hey, any kind of favor, any of that, you can put that in writing. Always have it in writing. Always have it in writing. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Honey Bunny, thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Um, you thank have you. you have a super blessed day. I will call you back as soon as we get finished with the stream. And uh, so I can get some more information and some more stuff from you. And uh, and you have a blessed day. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for coming on today. You too. Thank you. I enjoyed it. All right. Now you take it easy. Stay blessed. Uh, yes, sir. You did. Honey bunny, everybody. All right, it's just unfortunate that I couldn't stay on a little bit longer with this young lady. I'm over here at the shipper, and they ready to get me up out of here. So on that note, we're going to uh, we're gonna go ahead and end this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is the Lockout Men podcast. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? Yo, uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do that by the coffee app and the cash app, which is in the description. If you want to come on and chop it up with me, you can do that by hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. You can find me over on Instagram at LockoutMen. You can find me over at the Messenger on Facebook if you're part of the LOM community. Again, thank you very much. Thanks to everybody that's in the uh, LOM community that was joining me this morning. Lots of guys has had some good comments. Shout out to my man D Nitty, Mom Deuce Love, and the rest of you guys that was here this morning to uh, check out this uh, behind the scenes live chat with Honey Bunny. And on that note, I want to wish you guys well. You guys have a blessed day. I am out. Searching, 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 searching.